Hey everyone, welcome back to another Common UI tutorial. In this video, I'm gonna be going over the tile view and the list view. Now we're going over both of them at the same time because essentially they're basically the same as functionality goes. They use very like similar functions, features, and even under like the tile view when you utilize any of the like events and stuff, it's under the category of list view. So it kind of tells you that they use basically the same thing. The only difference really is basically like the visibility and then uh, tile view allows you to like put multiple things in one row and then you continue to do that for all rows um, so it has like slight changes to it but they're basically the same but I'm gonna go over it both anyways now um, in this video even if you're not using common UI you can utilize the explanation explanation and the features that are going over because uh, there's not much of a difference between the common UI widgets of them, as well as the standard user widgets that are used in uh, Unreal. So you can still take away the functionalities, the explanations, and then utilize them in the regular widgets. There's slight changes, and really it's just um, because you can turn them into like uh, activated widgets and things like that. But anyways, let's get into it. So now that we've gone away from the baby face to me, let's go into the important stuff. So I'm gonna showcase the list view and the grid view, and then just briefly kind of explain what's happening. So essentially what we have on the left is the tile view, and I think I just called it grid view on accident. Nonetheless, tile view. If I say grid, I'm just referring to tile. Um, I don't know why my brain does that. But nonetheless, on the right, we also have the list view, which will then just showcase all of them in one giant list. Well, the tile has, um, you can have more than one per row or per, yeah, per row. I think row is left to right. Yeah. Anyways, and then when we click a button, it will actually remove it from the list. And then I actually have it set up so that if I click on one of them, it will actually delete from both. And that's just pure laziness without trying to duplicate functions. But what it does is this button, when we hover on and we click it, it will remove it from this list. And then actually, if you select on the marble icon here or just the circular icon, you actually get a different event, which says item selected. And that just means that we're firing that off. And then the text is actually set to a data table. Well, the images are too. And then based on that, we're generating all of these list views. And then I just like re reproduce that like 20 times so that we have this giant entire list. But that's what's going on. I'm going to show you how you can go about using a button within the tile view and the list view. That was actually the most painful thing to figure out uh, for me. And after some extensive research, I ended up figuring out that I was just doing something really dumb. But Hopefully I can help minimize that for you guys. So I'm going to go into a brand new pro pro ah, project that I created. I just set up some default stuff and then we're going to go right into how to go about creating this. And in this project, I've just set up a few things such as like all of the input stuff. I'm not going over that. You can take a look at my other videos that are available. And then I have a bunch of images that I imported into here to be used within here. Uh, we're actually not going to be using these uh, keyboard stuff for this tutorial, but I did create some styles for the button. I also created a button that just says click me. Uh, I'm not actually going to change the text. It's just going to say click me. Um, but yeah, you could change the text if you really wanted to. And then I also have once we create our widget, we're just going to be able to add it to the, the viewport. Very standard stuff just to help speed this along and gave you the quick rundown in like 30 seconds or 40. I don't know. Math. And yeah, so from here, what we'll do is we'll actually create a brand new widget. It looks like I actually created a list view widget on accident. Uh, but essentially, let me actually just delete all of this because I don't want to re-record this right now. What I'm using is an overlay instead of a canvas just to kind of save myself some time. And then we're putting the tile view and the list view into this overlay. So we're going to use a tile view. We're gonna grab that common tile view and then we're gonna grab that list view and we're gonna drag that in here as well. And then also to kind of showcase if we grab the list view here, just to kind of showcase that things are relatively the same, 
Uh, if we notice when I'm moving back and forth, there's really little to no difference when we go back and forth. And that's just what I want to showcase to you both or to you and to me. So yeah, they are relatively the same. Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and delete that one. I'm actually gonna change this name to just list view and tile view just to keep it nice and simple for me. Uh, view. Okay, so I compiled and you'll notice that right now uh, it says that there is no entry widget. We're unable to build this. Something's happening. Now, you can't really read this because it's pretty zoomed out. So let me actually fix these so that we can actually see what's happening here. So we're going to go ahead and do, let's go ahead, wrap this into a size box. Size box. Let's do something like, let's do like 800 by 800. I think that should be good. Let's also wrap this in a size box. We want both of them just to be visible for us. And then we'll go ahead and do 800 and then 800. We're gonna put the center on the left. So if I scroll out a bit, you still can't read yet. Just bear in mind while I am fixing this. So we'll do middle. And then padding, let's just do like 10. Just so it's not exactly touching. Okay. And if we scroll in, it says no entry widget class specified on this list. Now the thing is with the list view and the tile view, they don't operate on their own. They actually require an extensive amount of other blueprints in order for them to function. Now you can also do this in like C++ as well. So technically not blueprints, but you get the point. Uh, for those that are doing this in blueprints, that's what this video is for. Um, anyways, what we need to do is let's get rid of that compile results thing because it's getting in the way. And I clicked on the scroll box, so let's actually go to the tile view. And then now we can scroll down to where we are looking for entry widget class because it's saying, saying we don't have one specified. So if we scroll down, we'll see list entries. And from here, this is where we'll be able to create one. Now, obviously we don't have one listed here, but we have to create one, which is this plus button. But before I do that, what you can also do is you can specify the entry's height as well as the width of it. So this is for the tile view. So we want to state how, I guess, how tall they are and how wide they're gonna be. Uh, so what we could do is we could do like 100 and then we can also do, wait, let's do 150. That makes more sense. And then from there, obviously, if I compile, it's still going to be an error. So you also have the ability to preview entries. Since we don't have a widget class yet, it's not going to do anything. Before we get into that widget, we're also going to be prepping the list view at the same time. So I'm actually doing both. Uh, and you'll also notice when we go to list entry, we actually don't have that specified over here. We actually just notice we can only enter in the entry widget. Uh, so it is important that you set the sizes of what you want the entry widget to look like. That way you aren't running into, I guess, any issues of very tall widgets. I, I have no idea. Make sure to design it according to what you need. And then you also have the preview button so that once this is set up, you can showcase them. So let's go ahead and create our widget class. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit this plus button. From here, it's now gonna create a brand new widget class that we'll be able to utilize here. We're gonna go into this widget folder that I created. We're gonna call this entry widget. We're being super creative. Uh, let's do UI here. And also I kind of just switched to the UI naming convention. Uh, it was in the Epic's like demo stuff. They use UI all the time. And then I also figured may as well, it's significantly easier on me. So yeah, hitting the save button from here. Now we're gonna be able to design our widget. So what exactly do we wanna put in here? So let's actually just go ahead and we're gonna grab a overlay. Now we could do something even lazier. Like we don't have to do an overlay. We could, uh, do like a vertical box if we really wanted to. And actually let's do that because I think that may be better. Um, let's go ahead, go through here so that you don't actually have to use an overlay for no reason. 
And then from here, let's go ahead and grab a lazy image. So the reason why I want, oop, I didn't want a vertical, I wanted a horizontal. We'll go through here and replace. Back to what I was saying, the reason why I'm getting a lazy image is because for the lazy image, once it's kind of outside of view, it's actually just gonna like disappear and not take up any type of space. Now the list view kind of takes care of that on its own, but nonetheless, you can improve upon it. So from here, we're also gonna grab a text. We're gonna grab the common text. Let's drag that right on top of here. And then we're also gonna grab our button base that I created. Now you can add any type of button that you already have. And then let's go ahead and hit fill for all of these. And then for the text specifically, I put it in the center uh, and center like that. And then for the common text, I'm gonna put in the style that I use. Uh, looks like it's black. That was probably a mistake. Um, we'll fix that if it comes to it. Nonetheless, now we have our button that says click me, we have a random image, and then we also have text. Now, next thing next is we are going to have to work on the graph. So we have to set up so that we can actually set the text and we can also set the image. And then we'll get to the button later going over to the graph over here. So from here, we are wanting to, first things first, is on the left, you'll notice that it says loser, user list entry. And from here, it just has these three things. Now, the main thing is this is actually not the interface we need to use. I don't know why this is set to default, but it actually doesn't help us here. So what we actually need to do is go into the, the class settings and we need to add a, another interface and honestly this should be automatically and added anyways i don't know why we have to manually do it ourselves but if we actually type list we want user object list entry and then from here that will populate the correct things i'm going to get rid of the other one just to kind of minimize uh complications now you can still use the other one because it has other functionalities but it's not really useful for us in this case so from here, the main important one is none of these. We're actually not going to be using those. We want to use what's called the on list item object set. And this event is called when the object is set with essentially um, the new information. So when the widget is created, we're going to set the text, we're going to set the image and that is where we're going to be calling things. So this is essentially the begin play in a sense. Now it's not really begin play, uh, but the concept of it has been created and now we're going to set stuff uh, and call stuff. Uh, so yeah, don't, don't mix up the words on the meetings, but nonetheless, when the list is created, the tiles created, we're going to be utilizing this function. And you'll also notice what comes out of this is an object reference. So the thing is with the list view and the tile view is to help essentially manage everything. It actually uses just an object reference. It doesn't actually use widget references and then storing the widgets. Uh, so it helps with memory, especially for lists with like thousands. Now, if you're doing something that only has like 20 objects, you don't really need to use the list view because um, that's a lot more complicated than something you really need. Now, if you're going to have, let's say, an item shop that has like 300 different items that are all just listed there, or maybe they're all listed and you have to filter through whatever the case is, then you definitely want to be using this. So this helps optimize this to the best possible case for um, a lot less effort compared to what it would take if you didn't have this. So anyways, where I'm getting at is if it takes an object, we need to be able to reference the object. So we need to now create an object reference. Well, what we'll have and kind of utilize the information we need to pass along. So 
what we need to do is go into the, I should have created another folder for these. I guess I could just add it into the widgets. So from not new folder, we're now gonna create a brand new object. So if you look at this, make sure you expand all classes and just select object, which is at the very top and then select here. From here, we're just gonna do BP and then object entry. This is essentially going to be the passing along the information that's the middleman between the creation and to the widget. So the list view is gonna then create this object and then this object is then gonna pass the information to the widget. And then when the widget disappears, it will just be removed, but the object kind of remains. So it's a lot better performance wise, uh, but we have to create this middleman. Otherwise the list view is just not gonna work because it only takes object references and not widget references. You technically could plug in a widget, but then it gets a bit weird. So yeah, let's go into the middleman that we have over here. And for the middleman, this is essentially where we're gonna need to have the variables. So the uh, easiest route for me is because I'm going to be generating a list based upon a data table. So data tables, whenever you have to create them, you have to make a struct. So I'm actually gonna make a struct and then I'm gonna enter it in as a variable within this object. And I'm also gonna be using that to create a data table. So we'll be able to kind of like pass along information into the objects and the objects will also pass that along into the widgets. Uh, so it's kind of like a three-way communication, uh, but it is necessary. And that's where the complication stuff goes in it because you end up needing like multiple widgets or multiple blueprints, depending on what you're trying to build just to get it to function. And that's kind of like the pain point on this. So I'm actually gonna go back over here and I'm gonna create over here and we're just gonna call this data. I mean, I could call it data table, but I'm not gonna, uh, cause I was lazy to type and it's too late now. So for the structure, we're just gonna do F and then we're gonna name it data entry. I don't know why, but that's what it's gonna be called. And then from here, since we're gonna do a text, we're gonna do text here and we're just gonna call it text because that's fine. And then from here, we're gonna do a image because we want a texture. So essentially this is what the text is gonna change into, obviously because text, text. And then the image that we added onto the icon is gonna be use a texture 2D. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now that we have our struct here. Um, I'm also going to create a data table really quick. We're gonna do data entry. We'll do DT list view. And then from here, now we have all of our rows. Oop, add here. And I'm going to quickly add in all of these images that I have here. And then I'm also gonna add names. I'm only gonna have four rows, but give me just one second. And just like that, it was like I was never gone. All right, so we have our four rows. I mean, I call this purple, it could be pink, magenta, whatever we wanna call it. Nonetheless, now that that data table is out of the way, let's go ahead and add the struct into our object. Now it doesn't have to be a struct. It needs to be whatever information you wanna pass along from the creation to the widget. So if there's any information that needs to be within the widget, you want to pass along within this object. So I just wanna get that point across because this is the communication. So we're gonna go on ahead, grab this, or at least a reference towards what you need the widget to communicate with. Whatever it is, make sure it's here. And now we're just gonna add the struct. I'm not being creative. We're gonna call it a struct. And I think, what was it? Data entry? There we go. Look at that. Ex instance editable and exposed on spawn. Now we don't need to do anything, but we have text and we have image. That is what we need there. And now we don't need to touch that. Okay, so we've created our object. Now what do we do? For the list view and the uh, tile view, I almost said grid view again. Um, 
we need to add the items into them. So we have to create the object and then we have to add it to them. Kind of like you would do if you ever created a widget and you needed to add it to a um, like a vertical box. So if you create a widget, it's not added automatically to the viewport. You needed to add it to something. It's, it works functionally the same. And then you also notice our preview. So this is showcasing what five would do already added. Uh, also, I'm thinking I should change the text to white. So give me one second. Let's go into style, uh, button base. Oh, okay, so these have all the text. Let's go into here. Let's change that here. Okay. So let's go ahead, close that out. Let's just take a look. Okay, white. That's, that's a lot better because otherwise you're not going to be able to read it. So let's go into the graph, and from here, I already laid out the tie on the list view. I'm grabbing both the references, but if you ever want to see all the events that are available, you can go to left, scroll down, or we could go back to the designer, scroll all the way down, and we'll see what is available here. We have on entry initialize, so this is when a widget is generated like in the beginning, and then if you ever clicked on an item, if you ever double clicked on an item, if an item was hovered and it is no longer hovered, then if you selected on it and then you selected on another widget, oof, these are a lot of wordy stuff. So if a widget is ever brought into view, you can actually do something automatically. So let's say you have hundreds of items and on the 50th one, you wanted to do some type of animation. What you could do is when you click here, you can go through and then if item equals whatever the case may be, then do et cetera. So you do have the ability to do certain functionalities in this. Uh, the main things that I would wanna point out is the on item clicked, cause this is pretty important. If the item is clicked on, uh, then you'll want to do something. Just also remember that when item is clicked, it doesn't mean the button is clicked. And that is actually the main thing. So the button itself uh, within a widget requires its own functions to make sure that it communicates. The item clicked will be anything. So it could be the, the background. It could be whatever's, um, I don't actually, I think if the widget is hit testable, basically, it will count as a click. So that is the important thing to know. So let's get back to how do we use the objects? So what we need to do is we need to create, or sorry, it's not create, it's construct object from class. So since we're creating an object, we wanna use our, doo -doo -doo, what do we call it? We called it our entry widget. So you can't just drag and drop in there, unfortunately. Uh, entry. Maybe I was a little too, object entry there we go and then from here we'll also notice that we now we have our struct so great so we can pass the struct into the object which we already know with the instance editable but where do we get that from that's where my data table comes in handy because that's how i'm creating this now you don't have to create based upon a data table you can add entries one at a time uh, so let's say you had like um like a list of abilities per se you added a new ability, so now you're gonna add a new item into it. So you would construct this object and then you would add an entry into it. And then whenever a, whatever the list was called, then you pull that entire list and you have it there, whatever it may be. So let's go ahead and grab these. Actually, let's move these over here because they're not needed yet. We're gonna get our data table rows. So get row names. data table list, and then I'm gonna loop here. Actually, no, we're gonna, yeah, yeah, we'll loop here for each loop. So basically we're looping upon all of the names. So we have every row that is available within this list. And then we're gonna get data table row. So now that we have the rows, we can go ahead and plug that in. 
And then from here, now we have every single row available and then you can actually just plug that in. So now we are creating a object based upon every single row that is available. And then from there, just like what we would do for vertical boxes, et cetera, we want to add an item. So add item and plug that in. You can also plug that in. You'll notice that they use the same functions because they're relatively the same. And then we should, it's on pre-construct, supposed to edit. Oh, well, we're passing along the object, but it, we're not setting in the widget yet. So I got ahead of myself, no worries. So from here, now we're passing along the information. So we're gonna go ahead and go into our entry widget. And this is where we can start setting info. So one of the things is right now, we currently have no way to get the information. Now, what you could do is what people, a lot of tutorials say is to cast to object, which, or you could cast to entry widget, sorry, from here. Uh, I'm not going to go ahead and do that because let's say you have like 200 items then you're going to be casting to about 200 different items. Um, yeah, I'm going to use blueprint interfaces. Now, of course, like everything can be optimized to its own way, but nonetheless, what we're going to do is create an interface and then let's type in interface. We're going to call this BI for blueprint interface. And we'll just call this list view because I'm just going to use that for everything. And from here, what we want to do is pass info. What I'm going to be doing, and I know that I'm kind of speeding through some of this stuff, but I'll try to explain it as best as I can for the blueprint interface is going to be yet again, another middleman it's going to be passing the information from the object to the widget uh, because instead of casting, we're going to be using the interface and uh, we're basically sending a message from the object to the widget saying we need your info. So what we're going to need to do is have an output. So we're going to go ahead over here. We're going to grab the data entry and we're just going to pass launch struct again. And the reason why we're doing an output is because within the widget, what we're going to do is we're going to do pass info. So if it has the interface, it's going to pass the info along. Uh, let's also go ahead and add the interface here just in case we need it. And then we also need to go back to our object and then we're going to now do, do, do interfaces. I don't know why that took me so long to find it add here. And now for our pass info, plug that in. And that's all we need to do for the object. Shouldn't have to go back there now. So now we have a functional way to get the information we need. Now the easiest thing to do for us here would be to simply promote this to a variable. Now you don't have to promote it to a variable. You could in fact just do um, well, let's do to function. No, I don't think so. Hold on. Can I go to function? No. Anyways, you don't have to do this. You could in fact just do break and then you can go ahead and grab. We have our text block. And then we have our image. Let's rename this. I hate seeing the numbers and having things weirdly named. We're gonna go ahead, grab the image, set texture, uh, lazy texture. Yeah. And you should be able to plug that in. Nice. And we'll plug that in. And we'll also do text block set text. And plug that in. And actually, yeah, let's delete that. We don't need a variable. We should be fine. 
And if we need it, we'll have it stored right there. But like that, let's go back to our view. It should. Let's take a look. All right. So by taking a look, we now see that we have the list that is available. You also notice that this thing is looking awful. So actually, let's go into our entry widget. Um, boom, 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 boom. I think we could do this. Let's. Let's check to see if a size box will work for it. Let's go a width of 100. No, that didn't really change anything. Yeah, because it's not going to override the list settings. So let's actually go over here. So height width, let's do like 200. Fill. Yeah, the text is just too big. That's fine. It's fine. We're all fine. I'm crying. Am I doing the wrong one? What about this? 50? Oh, that's better. Kind of. I don't know why I'm messing with design right now. I'm getting rid of this text. We don't need to see that. I feel like that's only conflicting with the look. Anyways, you are seeing that it is populating. It's working. That's fantastic. That's what we want. But as of right now, you'll notice nothing is really happening. Can't really do anything. Our end goal is we want to remove those buttons. So whenever we click this button, we want to remove that entry. And then to make this look even greater, let's go into our list view. And we're going to do this. We're going to do a for loop. And we'll just do 60, because why not? And then if we go in here, now we have a giant list. And wow, the tile view came out way better than this one. Uh, probably because the entry widgets doesn't have a height. So what if we did? A height of 200? Does that work? Oh, it does. OK, so yeah, for the list view, you can use the sides box. And then for the tile view, you can't. Um, I didn't really experiment on size boxes for this, but at least you guys got to know that while we're working on it. So now let's go about how to utilize these buttons as well as how to register clicking on the images as well. So let's click on our list view. And then in here, what we can do is that if we did on item click for both the tile view and the list view, this will get whenever we click on the pretty much anything that's not a button uh, and also pass the item reference. Also pay note that item reference is an object reference. It is not a widget reference. Uh, so just bear in mind when you use any of the events, an item uh, does not uh, come in the form of a widget. So if you put in variable vari <laughs> variables within a widget, um, those are not able to pass through on items. You do have to pass along through like a blueprint interface or casting, things like that. So what we could do is let's go into our blueprint interface. We're already doing pass info. So what we can do is pass info. Let's break and let's just do a print. And let's go back to our entry widget. This is where we are receiving past info. 
and we will just plug that in. So now what we'll do is let's copy paste here. And then we should be able to now see the item text. Oh, looks like something failed to compile. Oh, it's because I forgot to plug that in. Okay, so now we should see red when we click this image up here. And like that, it does work. But you also notice when I click this, nothing happens. So like I said, the button on the list consume the clicking event. So you don't actually get the click event that occurs for the list view. So that's where that comes in handy and you have to do a separate form of setting that up, which you can use blueprint interfaces for and things like that. So what we want to do is what we could do here is let's say, let's go to the list view instead of printing or passing, we could do this. So let's go ahead and grab our list view and our tile view and we'll remove item. And just plug that in. And we'll go ahead and do this. So that means when we click the image, they disappear. And we're also removing from both sides as well. And like that, we're able to go through and remove them uh, by hitting the images. Of course, you don't want to remove them by selecting on the image. But what you could do is like on click, you could like um, make a tooltip appear or maybe on hovered, you could do that. So like, for example, on item is hovered. And then you could do like a branch. So if it's true, you can print like create pop up for like a description of an item or whatever the case may be. So create pop up appearing here. So since I did it for just the list view and not over here, that's why it's not appearing. But if I go on top, it says create pop up. So you do have the functionalities to go through and utilize. Like I said, not really going into every single one, but there are a lot that are here that you can use that are already built in. You can even do like just when things are in view, uh, you can also get like the offset and distance remaining. There, there's a lot of good stuff here. Anyways, let's go on how to make a button work within the actual widget itself. So let's go into the entry widget. From here, we need to do is for the button. So what you'll need to do is go into the button, make sure it is a variable. Um, I'm just gonna change that to button base, just make it a little bit better. And then from here, for the button base, we have the events on the left. So on clicked, button clicked, hovered, etc. Have all of that fun mumbo jumbo. From here, whenever we click it, we need to get a reference to the list view and the grid view. Um, now, if we don't have a direct reference, we're gonna have to find a way to get it. So the best way to do that for um, me is to set up the pass info to also pass along the reference since it's going through the object and then it's going from the object to the widget. That seems like the best way to get the communication. So what we'll do is under the pass info function, we're gonna add another output. So we're gonna click here, we call this widget, and you can call it anything you want, you can call it list view or whatever. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a common user widget for here, because we only need the reference, we don't really need to specify the specific widget. You can if you want, if you're gonna to need to pull in variables, et cetera, whatever you may need from it. Since I'm just gonna be using it as a point to pass along a message, I don't really need it to be as specific. So over here, now we'll notice that we're seeing widget pop up here. So let's go ahead and promote that to a variable. And I also, um, if some things are looking uh, slightly out of place compared to the earlier, 
Um, this portion of the video got corrupted and I had to basically redo some of this. So some things may not be 100% the same. Um, feel free to comment if I missed anything. I don't believe I did. I just didn't want to redo all 30 minutes of this video uh, for the third time. So now that we have a reference, and what we can do is when button is clicked, we're going to need to have this widget. And then we're also going to need to do something. So we're going to need to remove a widget. So another thing is under our interface, we want to communicate with the widget that we want to remove um, the items. So let's create a brand new function. And let's just call this uh, remove widget. I'm super creative. And for the input, we're going to put an object. And we'll just call this object ref. And the reason I'm doing an object is because when you look at the item object set, we are getting that object reference. Now the object is the middleman. He is the one or it is the one that communicates with the list when it's get, getting added, when it's getting removed. So we need to have that. If you were to try to pass along the widget, it won't actually let you remove. Uh, so if, if I set it up, like I'll set it up right now to kind of showcase what happens if you put in the widget. This is something that actually um, took me a while to figure out what I did wrong. It was something really small and I ended up going through like a thread from 2020 uh, where somebody basically just mentioned, make sure it's the object. Um, could have read the documentation, but it's kind of messy and hard to read. So that is what it is. So now that we have created the remove widget, we would want to send a message for remove widget. And then next thing we need is the object reference. Now, of course, we can't just do this. Uh, so let's go ahead and promote that to a variable as well within this widget. So we're going to plug in here and delete. And I'm going to move this slightly over just to make it line up and then drag that into here. So now we'll have the widget here but I want to showcase what happens if we do self first. So I'm going to have that there just to sit. Now we need to go back into our list view because since we are passing along messages, we need to make sure that we have the interface added. So let's go ahead and oh, looks like I forgot to delete something. Um, add here, and then we're going to add that list view. And then from there, we're now going to see the removed widget. So let's click here. We have this other event. And now whenever we are being received this, what should we do? And that is going to be, we're going to be removing these items. So let me actually delete these so that we don't have anything reappearing. And let's go ahead and just drag that down. So right now we have the widget con connected. So let's go ahead and go into our level, hit play. Oop, I think I messed up on the maps. and hit play. There we go. <laughs> and then if we were to click here, you'll notice nothing is happening. And that is because, like I said, the widget or reference does not remove it. But if we were to delete this and plug in the object reference, and now it deletes, and you'll see that we can delete all of these. Uh, oop. I'm just basically removing all of the non pinks. All right, so you get the gist. They're appearing and you can remove them. So the main takeaways I want you to get throughout this entire long spiel, if I could narrow it down to like a two minute how to do is you need to be able to, let's go into our widgets. When you create a list view or tile view, you must create an object within that list view you need to construct it and add it into the tile view and the list view. This object then needs to have an entry widget to communicate with. And this is the object will communicate with the widget. This widget 
is also set within the tile and list view under the entry widget class. You need all three. You don't have to do interfaces. You could do casting or whatever else you want to do, but that is the main takeaway on how to set it up. But I went into a lot further of just how exactly you can put it together, what you're using and why you're using it. Now I'm gonna go over just a few other things the list widget has. Now you don't exactly have to um, like listen to this part unless you want like further explanations. But basically if we go over to, I don't know why it's actually when I click on this, it all grays out. I must've clicked something on accident. Oh, hide unrelated. Okay. So let's go over here and let's type in lists. Now, if I do list, we can see everything that's available under the list view. And this is kind of what I meant earlier with grid view and tile view, basically the same thing. Everything is under list view. And the main things to kind of pay attention to is that um, depending on how you're communicating, you can get the index. You can also get item, uh, to, to get item at, and they also have matching functions of set item, which is set item selected, or we'll go over that in a second, set item, set selected item. And then there's, what is the other one? I think it's do, 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 do. Set item, set navigate to item. There was one that was for index. I forget what it was. Or maybe I'm losing my mind. Uh, clear selection, get selected items. Get set selected index. There we go. Uh, I just, I was typing item instead. So list. Two, two, two. Okay. So. With these, the get index item works with the set selected index. Uh, so you can actually choose which index is going to be selected. Selected is, um, for example, when we are going in and we're clicking on this image, uh, that is selecting it. Uh, clicking the button doesn't exactly select it, but what you could do is that under the widget, instead of setting remove widget, you could go into this event and set selected item. And then you can plug that in as well. And then that would communicate with the list view saying, hey, we are selected. Another thing with the list view is that when you're doing selected, you actually have the option to set it to multiple selected. Uh, so if I were to scroll up, so selection mode, selection mode, you can go to multi items. This will allow you to select multiple different items. So let's say you're choosing to buy multiple things uh, in a shop and then you hit the purchase button. Uh, you can have everything selected that you clicked on and then you would be able to set them as selected. And then on top of that, I know this is getting a little spider webby, but just bear with me. Uh, you can also, it's get item, get list items, and this will pull in, oh wait, no, sorry. Selected, get selected items. That's what I meant to do. Get list items is to get every single item in the list, uh, but get selected item will pull all the ones that you clicked on and then you'd be able to then loop that into whatever you need to do. So there, there is that. Um, let's see. And then under tile view, you can also do, not tile view. Um, okay. So we know what set selected item means. It's basically the item is being selected and then you could do something with the selection. Um, and then you can also select it based upon the index of the item if you have the items reference. Uh, so for example, if we had the object, we can then do this. So by getting the 
let me delete all this stuff so it's less chaotic -y. Um Get the index for the item, and then we're setting that as selected. So that's what those functionalities are. Uh, you can also do, um, like if item is hovered, uh, you can have certain animations happen. So you could just do like a branch and then do animation based upon this item that's shown here, what, whatever it is. And then there's another thing to do, 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 do. Okay, here. So what you can also do with the widget, and I know I'm like saying you can also do is because I'm just basically going over everything and uh, didn't fully plan it out. I just wanted to give us some more explanations on stuff. This is how you can interact when different things uh, have been selected with. So from here, if it is selected, you can say add to player inventory and then if false, remove from inventory. Or maybe you can say add to a list that could potentially get added later. And then if false, then if it is in that list, then remove it. You can do stuff like that. Or if the item is selected, make the overlay yellow. And then if not, make it invisible, whatever it is. So you do have those type of features that are available. And I wanted to make them known because they are like the most important ones uh, to pay attention to. And then always, always make sure that you know that the object reference is always the object that you created, which is this entry object, and it's not the widget. So just bear that in mind. I hope you enjoyed the further explanations of everything that I went into. I'm sorry if some things were double counted and I ended up explaining things multiple times. Just really wanted to get it across how to use it. A lot of this just took quite some research for me to fully grasp and make sure that I can communicate it in a way that I prefer. If you enjoyed the video and the tutorials, please feel free to subscribe, join the Discord, join the Patreon, all the other self-promo stuff. It's great having you guys. We'll see you next time.